Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a quick take. On episodes like these, I give you my initial take on a newly spoiled card or commander from an upcoming set. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander Scores Studio. Welcome to the show. So, we've got yet another exciting Commander spoiler. Well, a, uh, a jump start, a commander from Jumpstart that was spoiled. Let's go with that. Yeah, so anyway, it's going to be doing another quick take on this one. And again, on quick takes, I'm going to take you through kind of how I would build around this new commander, what kind of cards I would consider, and maybe some reasonable upgrades to think about as well. So yeah, let's just jump into it with Nayeth of the Dire Hunt. And I'm sure I said that name wrong, so I apologize to Nayeth. Um, a 3-3 human warrior that costs two green green. She has whenever one or more creatures you control fight or become blocked, draw a card. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay two in gruel. If you do double target creatures power until end of turn, that creature must be blocked this combat if able. So this commander does a couple of things. Again, anytime you see card advantage on a commander, that is kind of like a, oh, this commander seems like it's going to be pretty powerful. Can do, or, you know, can take uh, kind of this mechanic of, you know, fight, which really hasn't been built around too many commanders. I mean, Ronus, uh, the Indomitable, I believe, is kind of like the first, like, fight club commander that we've really seen. This one kind of takes and says, hey, I'll give you a card advantage whenever you fight. Also, when you come blocked, uh, and it does give you a way to kind of force a block as well in Double Creature's Power, which you can definitely take advantage of. There's a lot of exciting things you can do. I think that the focus that I would probably take this one, though, is probably focusing mostly on that fight. Uh, because, again, if you've got multiple instances of fight, you draw from each of them. So not for all having the exact same time. But if you've got multiple instances of fight, you're going to be able to draw multiple cards versus kind of, in combat, you know, if one or more creatures you control become blocked, you just get one draw. Again, I'm not a judge, so if I'm misunderstanding any of these rules, my apologies. But basically, I think that fight is probably the more powerful version to take this deck. And also, just there really aren't, again, too many fight club commanders out there. So let's take Nath in the fight direction. So uh, the first kind of, you know, initial cards, obviously, that you would include are things like, you know, go for blood. A sorcerer for one into red says, target creature you control fights uh, another, or fights target creature you don't control. And it's got cycling for one. So this now just becomes basically, hey, a, a, it's a cantrip. Any of your fight spells essentially just become cantrips. You know, you, you are basically, you know, getting a free piece of removal. I mean, obviously, if your creature is bigger than the other one, it's not going to die. But you're getting a yeah, free removal, you know, on top of, you know, drawing a card. So yeah, it's definitely worth it to include a lot of fight spells in this deck, even if they're just individual fight cards. Ones that get even better, though, are ones that can do multiple kind of instances of fight, like Cetus and Tactics. An instant for one in a green. It has Strive. It costs green more to cast for each target beyond the first. It says until the end of turn, uh, any number of target creatures get plus and plus one and gain. Tap. This creature fights another target creature. So yeah, basically, you know, you just kind of dish out a lot of green mana. You pump a lot of green mana into this and you say, okay, yeah, right before my turn, I'm going to make all these creatures be able to fight. And yeah, I'm going to have different instances of fights. So, you know, if you've got five creatures fighting, you're going to be drawing five cards off of this one spell. And on top of, you know, being able to take out your opponent's creatures so you can control the board and draw cards, you know, in green and red have a lot of big creatures that can kind of help take over the game from there. Uh, Gruel Rage Beast uh, is, a, is an example of one that kind of continuously helps you fight. A 6-6 beast that costs 5 red and a green. When it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature fights target creature and opponent controls. Again, you're going to have a lot of big creatures in this deck, most, most likely, so your creature is going to be at least be able to take out, you know, a creature smaller than it on the board. So yeah, every single time you cast a creature spell, essentially this is like, hey, you cast a creature spell, that creature comes into play, it takes something out for you, and you draw a card on top of that. So that makes it, it's really effective. A uh, one that is somewhat similar, but in a different way is Thorn Mammoth. It's a 6-6 elephant with trample and it costs 5 green green. Uh, when it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Thorn Mammoth fights up to one target creature you don't control. So basically you can just say, okay, that creature that is coming to play no longer needs to do the, the fighting. My Thorn Mammoth is going to do my fighting for it. Uh, and you know, you can fi have it fight multiple creatures, depending on if it's going to survive or not. Uh, you know, depending on how many creatures are coming into play. But yeah, your Thorn Mammoth is kind of doing the fighting for you. Uh, one that takes us kind of a step further, 
and it's kind of like a mono green board wipe ish uh, is apex altasar it's a 10 10 dinosaur for seven green green so nine mana in total but again you're in green so you've got plenty of ways to ramp uh when it enters the battlefield it fights up to one target creature you don't control and it's got enrage when it is dealt damage it fights up to one target creature you don't control so basically this is like hey okay uh apex altasaur go ahead and fight something okay oh it hit, got, got taken or took damage it's enrage it's gonna fight something else okay all right and then you can keep doing that and doing that as many times as you want uh, basically but again it's up to so you don't have to keep doing it until your apex altasaur is dead so basically this is kind of like uh, any single time you can make this thing fight or make it take damage you can keep repeating that and kind of like repeating that kind of board wipe that this is again you can basically take out you know basically up to nine you know uh, power toughness of creatures essentially kind of across the board a lot of creatures you can take out a uh, guild feud is something to consider as well it's an enchantment for five and a red and i think actually i talked about this one kind of on a janky but awesome enchantments episode recently so at the beginning of your upkeep, target opponent reveals the top three cards of their library. May put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield and puts the rest into their graveyard. You do the same with the top three cards of your library. If two creatures are put onto the battlefield this way, those creatures fight each other. So I kind of talked about this in that episode, but basically this card, I think, is kind of being slept on a little bit. You know, if you're in a red, green deck, egg rule deck, you've got access to a lot of big creatures, and you're probably going to have a lot of big creatures in your deck. Out of your three opponents, there's bound to be one of them that's, that has a deck that's not focused on creatures, so or at least big creatures. So if you've got a, a, an opponent who's got a lot of small creatures in their deck, you can target them. If you've got someone who doesn't even have any creatures within the deck, like more of a spell slinger deck, you can target them as well. But yeah, this basically just get a creature off the top of your deck for free. And if you if you hit an, if your opponent hits a creature as well, you're probably gonna be able to take that out with a fight. You're gonna at least draw a card from this. It's it's free card advantage essentially each and every single turn on top of getting a creature that's gonna be pretty big into play and taking out an opponent's creature. A decently older card that actually I had to look at the Oracle text to make sure that it actually worked uh, and actually is a kind of a fight card is Arena. It's a land that has pay three and tap it. Tap target creature you control and target creature, but it's on stories they control. Those creatures fight each other. So this is like a repeatable way to fight. Again, this is on a land, but that land doesn't tap for mana. So keep that in mind. It shouldn't really count as one of your land slots. But yeah, so basically this is a repeatable fight kind of, you know, for three mana, which can be very useful. Um, Some fight benefit cards you want to kind of include in this deck as well. Faux Razor Regent is one it's a four five dragon with flying it costs five green green when it comes into play you can have a fight target creature you don't control and whenever a creature you control fights put two plus plus one counters on at the beginning of the next end step so yeah basically this says hey this can fight but on top of that whenever one of your creatures fights if it survives it gets bigger which is fantastic so it can just fight you know bigger and better things a uh, silver clad ferocidons is an especially brutal one it's an a5 dinosaur that costs uh five red red has enrage whenever it is dealt damage each opponent sacrifices a permanent so yeah you've got ways to make this fight you can basically force your opponents to sacrifice a ton of permanence without this it can be a very brutal card uh, and again you can also you know if you don't have any ways to make it fight you can use your commander's ability to you know double its power and make, force it to be blocked so yeah you can basically you know force that damage that's going to be dealt to it um another kind of card uh type of card that can come in handy in this deck too are death touch creatures like acidic slime a 2-2 ooze that cost uh three green green Death Touch, when it comes into play, destroy target artifact and enchantment land. Um, basically, but yeah, I mean, it's a very versatile card. It can destroy things that it comes into play, but also having Death Touch is very relevant. Again, when it fights, it's going to be able to just take out any creature on the board that's not indestructible or regenerates or whatnot. But then on top of that, you know, again, your commander can force that block. So maybe your opponent only has one creature left, and that creature is a very valuable one to them. This is a, you know, a forced kind of like, you know, kill spell, essentially. Um, you want to be able to guarantee that your fights kind of do take out your opponent's creature. So something like a Bonds of Mortality can be great in this deck it's an enchantment for one a green uh when it enters the battlefield draw a card and it has pay a green creatures your opponents control lose hexproof and indestructible on a turn so this can get around you know those creatures that you can't target now you can and then also the indestructible aspect as well you couldn't take them out of the fight now you can take them out of the fight so that can come in great uh must be blocked is a direction that you can take this deck or maybe just include a couple things so gorm the great uh is an example of one that could be a good addition a two seven giant warrior that costs three and a green uh it has partner but you're not gonna be able to do that in this deck uh vigilance uh it must be blocked if able and it must be blocked by two or more creatures is able if able so this can actually help get creatures through which is really good and also it's guaranteeing a block so it's going to allow you to draw a card with your commander nemesis mask is another one that you can consider as well it's an equipment for three it says all cre creatures able to block equip creature do so and it's got equip for three so let's say we're kind of a one that you can move around if you need to it can help get all your creatures through except for one you know on an opponent it can also just force you know it, it can force the blocks that you can draw with it as well some reasonable upgrades for this deck. One that I would probably consider is Polyraptor. A 5-5 five, five dinosaur that costs 6 green green. It's got Enrage. Whenever it sells damage, create a token that's a copy of Polyraptor. I mean, 
This thing is going to be great with fight spells. You know, you can just keep creating copies of this entry by making sure it gets damage. Again, you can kind of force blocks, you know, with this deck as well. If you've got something like Roll Rage Beast in play, this is, I mean, it pretty much just kind of goes infinite-ish, I'm sure. Something along those lines, but yeah. Uh, Oran Frostfang is another good one. A 2-6 snake uh, that costs three green green. It says attacking creatures you control have death touch. Whenever a creature you control deals da combat damage to a player, draw a card. It's another way to draw a lot of cards. It also gives death touch again to your attacking creature. So if you've got any instant speed fight effects, that can be very helpful as well. And again, you know, you can force a block. You can force uh, a creature to die, you know, um, if your opponent only has, you know, one valuable creature, they're going to have to block, you know, if you use your commander's ability and your creature's got death touch, it's going to take them out. Uh, Heroic Intervention, I believe it was just uh, reprinted um, in M21. It's an instant for one and a green, uh, and it says, Permanent you control, gain hexproof indestructible instructible turn. Uh, again, this is a fantastic board white protection. You're going to be relying with this deck on a lot of creatures, so protecting your board is great. Again, giving your creatures indestructible can be fantastic as well to kind of allow you to continuously fight over and over again. Again, if you give your Apex Ultasaur, you know, indestructible, that's just pretty much, I believe, basically just a board wipe, pretty much. Oh uh, yeah, so essentially, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with this deck. Uh, Naeth, um seems like, you know, a, a really good kind of fight uh, fight club style commander. Again, we, we had Ronus that, you know, many people were building around that way, but this kind of gives you access to red as well, which is fantastic. You know, gives you that card advantage that you really want to see on a, on a commander that, you know, you can really build around and kind of have a lot of synergy with. So yeah, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So make sure you comment below uh, and let me know what your thoughts on this new commander are. What direction would you take this deck? And yeah, what are your thoughts on the cards that I considered in the direction that I talked about? So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who help make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.